We'll get tired of. Amen. I'm always in the mood for it. It's going to the house of the Lord and yes, praising our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for his mighty works and what he's done for us. Let's all stand and go before the Lord in prayer. Let's lift our hands and thank God for his goodness and what he's going to do in his service. Lord, I thank you, God. I appreciate you, Lord. Have your way in our hearts and in our life. Move, God. Accomplish your will this morning, God. Amen. Thank you for your love, for your mercy, Father, for your your salvation that is provided through no other but Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. How many are thankful for that love of God this morning? For that salvation that only comes through Jesus Christ. There's no other name but they have been given them up men whereby we must be saved. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord a hand clap off in this morning. He's worthy. I say he's worthy of all the praise. They look so many other people up. They look up celebrities. They look up sports people. But Jesus is the only one that's yes, worthy of lifting yes, up and giving yes. praise. Hallelujah. If you would, turn with me to page 119. We're going to say, he abides. Hallelujah. 119. I'm rejoicing night and day as I walk the narrow way. Where the hand of God in all life I see. And the reason of my bliss, yes, the secret all is this. That the comforter abides with me. He abides, he abides, hallelujah, he abides with me. I'm rejoicing night and day as I walk the narrow way, for the comforter abides with me. Once my heart was full of sin, once I had no peace with me, till I heard how Jesus died upon the tree.
stuck out to me in this song. And I sang this, this, this verse so many times. And it says, plunge in today and we may complete. And I thought about it. I like, wow. Yes. You know how incomplete we are without Jesus? Yes. But when we plunge into Jesus, we're made complete, Amen. completely whole. Yes. We're completely healed. Amen. All the problems we have in this world, it don't even matter no more. That's right. yes. Even when you get saved, you still have things that, you know, yes. are going on in your life or whatever. Yes. But with Jesus, you have somebody to go through them with. Yes. He's made yes. you complete. We're, inc we're incomplete without him. And the world looks for so many other things out there to try to complete them. You know, a relationship, a new job, you know, a bigger bank account. But it doesn't complete them. They're still unhappy. People right. commit suicide all the time. People abandon families all the time. But with Jesus, it's completeness. Yes. yes. And when you plunge into him, I, I want to wanna let everybody know, just get into Jesus. He'll make you make it complete. If you're streaming online and you don't know him this morning, yes. get, in, get in God. Yes. Plunge Amen. into him. Let him make you Amen. complete. Stop searching in other things of this world and give Jesus a try. Yes. Amen, amen. This time we're going to take up our Sunday morning tithe and offerings, and Brother Greg will help us yes. to receive the tithe and offering this morning, sir. Hallelujah, hallelujah. It's so good to be in God's house this morning and a blessing to give to him just a portion of what he's blessed us with. Amen. Amen. So you please pray that God bless us. May God bless the offering in Jesus' name. He will protect everybody. Bless him in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. amen. everybody according to what they're giving according to their giving at this time. Um, brother Sullivan is going to say, <laughs> I know this brother. I talk to him all the time. But you know, I had those blocks where, what's this, what's this guy's name? I do that with my kids all the time. I call, <laughs> you know, I got three and I call each of them by different names sometimes. And now and I, my mind goes back to my mother or uh, my grandmother used to do that to her. But I know this brother, right? He's a good brother. We appreciate him. We love him. And uh, this morning he's going to sing a special chorus. And after that, Pastor Watson will be coming to minister the word of the Lord to us. God bless you. Amen. Just a question. 
you in this world as we're called to serve you reach yes. others for you as they see us let us let them see you yes. working yes. in our lives we amen the glory and the honor praise the lord amen. it's a blessing to be here this morning in the house of god it's right. a blessing to be a child of god there it goes ah. and if you're joining us online this morning we're glad to have you with us i know that there are some who could not be here this morning who are watching with us online. So if you're watching online, why don't you give us a thumbs up, leave a comment, let us know where you're watching from so that we can pray for your city and pray for you where you are. Uh, but we're glad to have you joining us this morning as we are glad to have each one with us right. in person. Amen. It's a real Amen. blessing to have the opportunity to gather together in God's house. Yes. All right. We're taking our Bible reading this morning from the book of Genesis, chapter 4, beginning to read at verse 1. And Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain, and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. And she again bare his brother Abel, and Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. And in the process of time it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. And Abel he also brought of the firstlings of his flock, and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. But unto Cain and to his offering he had not respect. And Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell. And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wroth, and why is thy countenance fallen? If thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted. And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door, and unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. With the help of the Lord this morning, from this passage and other scriptures, we'll be preaching a message with the title, An Acceptable Sacrifice. An Acceptable Sacrifice. Reverend Brooks, sir, would you please pray over the message and the messenger. 
Heavenly Father, we're so thankful to be gathered in your house this morning. We ask you to bless Pastor Watson as he ministers your word, God. Help him to deliver it to the way that you would have, Father. Give him a fresh unction from on high from the Holy Spirit, God. We ask you to open our hearts, move within us, Father. Save the one that's near as hell. Accomplish your will this morning in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Cain and Abel both knew what kind of sacrifice would be acceptable unto God. We remember, and we can go back to the previous couple of chapters and see about how Adam and Eve, they were created, set in the garden. They were given that easiest commandment of the whole Bible, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat thereof. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. That was the only commandment that they had to follow, and of all the commandments you'll find in the Bible, it would have been the easiest to follow. Except they were tempted, except they were deceived, except they did not hold to the truth of God's word. And because they did not hold to the truth of the word that God had given them, they allowed themselves then to turn against God when they took of that fruit. And they ate it. And Eve took it and gave it to Adam who was there with her. And they both partook of it. And as soon as they partook, they knew their guilt. They knew their shame. They saw their nakedness. And they hid themselves. They sewed together fig leaves to cover up their nakedness. And then when God came to speak with them, God did something that could not possibly have been conceived of by Adam and Eve when he took an innocent animal and killed it and took the skins of that innocent animal to make a covering for Adam and Eve. And Adam and Eve, as they raised their children, surely the children saw the offerings that were being offered unto God in the place or in lieu of the uh, sacrifice of their own lives when Adam and Eve would commit another trespass against God. When the children would commit a trespass against God, they would have learned the kind of acceptable offering that God would require. And so we see that Abel, and we look in Hebrews 11, we see that it was by faith that Abel offered this good sacrifice. Right. The blood of an animal taking the place of the blood of a guilty person. Mm -hmm. They both knew what kind of sacrifice would be acceptable unto God. Abel, being a herder of sheep, had those sheep at his disposal. Cain, being a tiller of the ground, had the fruit of the ground, had perhaps orchards that he tended or, or other crops that he would have brought to God and say, you know what, I want to give God what I want to give God. I want to give God what is, I, uh, what is something that I produced. I want to give God what is my offering, not what he requires, not what he said would be acceptable. Amen. I don't want to go to Abel and say, hey, let me trade you this good crop for one of those sheep so that I can offer it unto God. He didn't want to humble himself in that way. He wanted to be proud and just say, whatever I offer God, that's what God's going to get. Mm -hmm. Amen. And in his anger... He turned against his brother, but before that, God stopped him and he said, if you do well, if you do well, Cain, you've got the opportunity to make it right, Cain. You've got the opportunity to change your ways, Cain. I'm not casting you out into the wilderness yet, Cain. You've got the opportunity to make things right if you'll offer an acceptable sacrifice. God all the way from the beginning has made his will known unto mankind so that we can know what he requires of us to please him. We can know. Sometimes it's, it's often joked about, and I'm using this as a reference because it's so commonly uh, made light of in society, not because my wife is difficult, because she's not. Because uh, a lot of times the jokes are made that you can't figure out women. You don't know what to do to please them. You don't know what you're going to do in order to set them off. You don't know what you're going to do that's going to be something that they delight in. Right. Okay, so again, we can relate to that as a common uh, way that society views things. But with God, it's not that way. All right. Amen. Amen. That's right. With God, it's not that way. There's no That's mystery right. about right. it. Amen. God lets us know Amen. how to please him. Yes. God has That's shown right. us in his word yes. what is good. And what does the Lord require of thee, O oh man? But to do justice, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with that creator. That's right. God shows us. What's required of us? And thank God that he did. He didn't just make it a mystery to Adam and Eve when they sinned, but he demonstrated to them this sacrifice. This animal's blood will be shed in the place of your own blood. This animal who is innocent is going to take your guilt upon its life. 
A sacrifice is required to close the distance between God and man that was created when Adam and Eve sinned. Sin is what separates mankind. In general, and each one individually, sin is what separates us from God, preventing our unity with him, preventing our entering into his kingdom. It is sin that is the distance between God and man. Think about it this way. God created Adam and Eve. He created them to have that perfect united relationship with him. And he gave them that one commandment. And he said, if you break this commandment, you will surely die. You will surely die. You will surely be separated from that source of life, which is God. And Adam and Eve sinned. And when they sinned, they separated themselves from God. God made everything perfect. When he looked at creation after every day, he said, it is good. When he put man and woman in the garden, he said, it is very good. And he made mankind to have that relationship with him. But man sinned and made that distance. God made everything good. The only thing that mankind ever created was that distance between him and God. That's right. Yes, sir. <laughs> but that sacrifice is what brings us back to him. Amen. The shedding of innocent blood for the guilty is what closes the gap. Sacrifice is not what a lot of people think of today as in temporarily giving up some creature comfort for a period of time. Now, it might be a sacrifice when you have to do without something for a while. If you say, my budget just won't allow me to live a lavish lifestyle that I was once accustomed to because of the turn that circumstances have taken, then you'll have to sacrifice. You'll have to make some changes. But a lot of times people think, and around here in Louisiana, uh, Lent is observed by many people, even people who are not Catholic, just because it's part of the culture of Louisiana. And so for, thir for 40 days, they'll give up something. They'll give up a creature comfort. They'll give up something that they're accustomed to for using it day by day. But it's with that thought in mind that at the end of these 40 days, I'll get it back. A sacrifice is not temporarily uh, uh, relinquishing some creature comfort. Come on, that's right. right. It's right. not doing out with uh, doing without something in order to get something better, as in you're making a trade of one for the other. Come on, sir. Right. That's right. A sacrifice is complete. A sacrifice is whole. Mm. A sacrifice yeah. is without reserve. Yes. And we think of Abraham when he was called to offer his son, Isaac, by faith. Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac. And he that had received the promise offered up his only begotten son because what God gave to Abraham, God now said, give it back to me. And that's the way it goes in our lives. In, in every aspect, if God requires us to provide something, if there is something that God requires from us, it's something that he's already given. That's right. When we talk about tithing, we're talking about that 10%. Well, God's already put the 100% in our hands. Yes. And Amen. he says, give me 10% back to yes. show your Come faith. All right. Amen. All right. When God says, give a sacrifice of praise, he's put that joy into Come our on. hearts. Yes. Yes. Okay. Amen. When God says, live yes. for him by faith, that Come faith on. is a gift of God. Amen. Yes. That's right. Everything Amen. that God requires of us is something that he's first provided. And we can see it demonstrated to such a great degree in the life of Abraham. Yes. When he received that son of promise, God said, give it back to me. Abraham's faith was such that even if Isaac were to die, God would have to raise Isaac from the dead in order to fulfill the promise that God had first received. Because Abraham knew that God would be faithful to his promise. God gave it to me. God wants it back. God said I could have it. That means if I give it to God, God's not going to do anything that's going to deprive me of his goodness. God's not going to do me anything that deprives me of his promises. I'll willingly give it back to God and see how God God blesses in the meantime. Amen. 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 That's right. He that received the promises offered up his only begotten son, of whom it is said that in Isaac thy seed shall be called, accounting that God was able to raise him up even from the dead, from whence he also received him in a figure. Abraham understood the resurrection. By faith, Abraham understood that life comes from death when that life is given to God. That's right. We give our lives to God as a sacrifice. 
And we receive life more abundantly. That's right. Jesus said, I've come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Amen. That's right. We give our lives as a living sacrifice unto God, holy and acceptable unto God. No reserves, nothing held back. Say, I'm giving all of myself to God. And we see God move and bless in our lives in ways that we never considered before even possible. By faith, Abraham gave, but only because God was able first to give it to him. Abraham did not agree to give God only half of Isaac and keep the other half for himself as if they had some visitation schedule. Abraham... Uh, God talking here. I want you to, uh, to make uh, an arrangement with me so that I can have Isaac dedicated unto me uh, every other weekend and two weeks out of the summer. That's not what God did with Isaac. That's not what God did with Isaac, and that's not what Abraham said, I require him back. God, you can have him full time, but I'll take him every other weekend and two weeks out of the summer. But God said, give me your son. And Isaac was given to God. Because a sacrifice is complete, a sacrifice is given without reserve. Just like Jesus when he gave his life. Just like Jesus when he gave his life. We can look back, Romans chapter 5 verse 12 says that as by one man sin entered into the world and death by sin, so death has passed upon all men for that all have sinned. And we see that ever since Adam, all of us have been born into sin. And we need a sacrifice to close the gap because while Adam was created in that relationship, united with God, when he severed that relationship, each person that severed from God requires a sacrifice to bring them back to God. So while Adam was yes. given that sacrifice... Amen demonstrated by God, the animal that he slayed to relieve that or to close that gap between him. Those that were continued born after Adam, that's us. We have to be able to give a sacrifice Amen. to Amen. unite ourselves with God. Yeah. And you can read all through the Old Testament about the sacrifices that were required for this sin, the sacrifices that were required for that sin, the sacrifices that were required on a weekly basis, the sacrifices that were required on an annual basis. God said, if you keep all of these sacrifices, then we'll have that union. God said, if you keep all of these sacrifices, if you observe perfectly all of these ordinances of the law and keep the sacrifices, then we'll have that relationship. But that was quite, a, quite an onerous uh, way to go about it. Because even if a person wanted to give God a free will offering, Say, I love God. He's been good to me. I've already paid my tithe, but I'm just so blessed by what God has done in my life that I want to give him more. Even that free will offering had to be a very specific type of gift. Everything that was required of God was specified of God. And what's required of us as a sacrifice is also specified. Whereas a sheep in the Old Testament days would have its rope cut, the blood poured out, and its body laid on the altar so that the blood of that innocent animal would take the blood of the guilty person. Blood is still required as a sacrifice for our sins. Mm -hmm. sure. The Bible says in the book of Hebrews, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. You know, there's no remission of sins unless blood is offered because death is the requirement. The wages of sin is death. Book of Ezekiel, let me read something here. Book of Ezekiel, chapter 18, beginning of verse 20. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. The son shall not bear the iniquity of the father, neither shall the father bear the iniquity of the son. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him, and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. We can't take the place of anybody else because we would only be able to die in our own places for the sins that we had committed. That's right. But if the wicked will turn from his sins that he hath committed and keep all of my statutes, he said, that's including those animal sacrifices that were there in the Old Testament. If the wicked shall turn from all his sins that he hath committed and shall keep all my statutes and do that which is lawful and right, he shall surely live. He shall not die. It's the same thing that God told Cain. If thou doest right, you'll be accepted. All his transgressions that he committed, they shall not be mentioned unto him. And in his righteousness that he hath done, 
he shall live. Because the sacrifice washes away, the blood of the sacrifice washes away the sins of the guilty person. And then God asked the question, have I any pleasure at all that the wicked shall die, saith the Lord God, and not that he shall return from his ways and live? God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. All right. That's right. Yeah. But when the righteous turneth away from his righteousness and committeth iniquity and doeth according to all the abominations that the wicked man doeth, shall he live. All his righteousness that he hath done shall not be mentioned. In his trespass that he hath trespassed and in his sin that he hath sinned, in them shall he die. The sacrifice would have to be repeated. If that righteous man went and committed some sin, then in order to be right with God, he would have to repent mm -hmm. of that sin and then offer that sacrifice again in order to be right with God again. So what are we to do? What are we to do, we who are born in sin? Because sin is passed upon all men. We who are born separated from God. Do we go out to one of these farmers in the area and say, give me a sheep, give me a bull, I've got to kill it so that its blood can count for mine? We who had been living right, but because of our turning our back on God, because of our pursuing our own ways, have separated ourselves again. When we come to our senses and say, my goodness, I've come so far from where I was in serving the Lord. I want to be with God again. I want that relationship again. Where do we find that sacrifice to bridge and to close the gap? Isaiah chapter 53 verse 6 says, all we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And then speaking of Jesus, speaking of Jesus, the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world, it says the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. All of my sins were put on Jesus when he went to the cross. Brother and sister, all of your sins were put on Jesus when he went to the cross. Think about that. All of our sins, the iniquity of us all was laid on him. That's right. That's right. Because Jesus was not born into sin. Amen. When God told Adam and Eve that a redeemer would come, he said the seed of the woman. Her seed. Now that doesn't make any sense biologically. Because a woman doesn't have seed. Come on. <laughs> the man has seed. Okay? The word is literally sperm. It doesn't make any sense biologically. It doesn't make any sense grammatically to say that this is what he was talking about, except that it was a virgin birth. Mm -hmm. That's why when the angel spoke to Mary, she said, how can this be, seeing that I have not known a man? Mm -hmm. But he said, the Holy Spirit will come upon you when you conceive. Yes. No biological input into that. All right. Mary, as a vessel yes. to bring... God yes. into the world. Amen. Amen. Who not being born in the similitude of Adam, again you can read Romans chapter 5 to find all this, was living that sinless life from birth because he wasn't born with the nature of sin that we all inherited from Adam. When he went to the cross and died, that death was not to pay for any of his faults. Right. That death was not to uh, say the wages of sin is death, and so all who sin, the soul that sinned, they must die. Jesus was innocent. That's right. Yeah. Amen. When he went to the cross, right. that law of sin and death that says the soul that sinneth, it shall die, was nullified Amen. In, That's right. in his death on the That's cross. Right. Amen. He didn't have to die. Book of Romans again in chapter 3, it says, God has set it forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. What that means, propitiation means that he's the appeasement of God because he died being innocent. 
we who are guilty can look at his sacrifice and say, God, the law of sin and death says the soul that sinneth, it must die. The law of sin and death says the wages of sin is death. But Jesus died being innocent. Let his death count for me. All right. Amen. 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 That's how the propitiation works. That's how the appeasement works. Yes. Amen. We say, let his death count for me. And because he died an innocent, all who will have faith in him, his death is effectual for each one of us. All right. All right. He Amen. is our Amen. sacrifice. His Amen. blood was shed yes. so that we can believe Amen. on him. He becomes our sacrifice, and his sacrifice was no less complete. Amen. No less complete than any sacrifice that was laid on an altar where the flames came up and consumed the gift. Jesus died. Jesus went to the grave. Jesus descended into hell, taking our place in judgment. And he rose again and he said, all power in heaven and earth is given unto me. And the Bible tells us that by the same spirit that raised him from the dead, that spirit quickens our mortal bodies so that we can live in righteousness Mm -hmm. through him, through his spirit, through the power of life. The law of sin and death says the soul that sinneth, it shall die. But the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Romans chapter 8 verse 1. The law of the spirit of life. Two choices, the law of sin and death or the law of spirit of life. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from that law of sin and death. I've set free. My price was paid. My sacrifice was offered. His blood was the cleansing for my sins. Mm -hmm. But now we have a sacrifice. Now we have an offering to lay before God. One that is acceptable unto God because a sacrifice must be clean. A sacrifice must be pure. A sacrifice must meet all the specifications. And our lives before the cleansing of the blood in Jesus Christ was nothing to offer unto God. But now, he said, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. A lot of times people will say, i got to get this right before I come to God. I'd come to church, but the way I'm living is just not the way a person going to church ought to live. And you know what? When they say that, they're absolutely right, except that they get it out of order. The way I'm living is wrong. The way I'm living is the way a Christian shouldn't be living. So I can't come to God. The right way to say that is I need to get to God. Because the way I'm living isn't right. I need to get to God because the way I'm living isn't the way a Christian ought to be living. I need his blood that was shed on the cross to cleanse me. I need his life in innocence to be my sacrifice, my remission, Sister Watson. And being cleansed by him, Mm -hmm. I am now going to live my life for him. That's right. That's right. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. He's not a God that calls us to go out and blow ourselves up. To right. prove our faithfulness <laughs> to him. All right. He's a God that says, live for me. That's yes. right. Yes. Live for me. That's right. That's right. Oh, yeah. Live for me. Holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. In another place, he said, you're not your own. You're bought with a price. Amen. You're bought with a price. I'm glad to be purchased by the blood. Yes, yes. yes sir. Yes, sir. I'm glad to be serving the one who gave himself for me. I'm glad to be living for the one that says, give me your all, but he's given me all that I am. His commandments are not grievous. Amen. It means it's not more than we can offer. It's not more than we can do. It's not out of our control. Yes. But an acceptable sacrifice is what he requires. Live for him. Let your life yes. be that Amen. sacrifice. Right. He That's gave right. his life for you. Give your life in service to him. Amen. Yes. Being cleansed, being forgiven. Yes. Live your life in that righteousness. As we bow our heads and close our eyes in reverence to God, out of respect also for those who are gathered here today, let that be your prayer. God, cleanse me by your blood. Forgive me, Lord. I see how far I've come from where I once was in you. Or, Lord, I know that I need to be close to you. Though my sins separated me. Lord, I give my life because you've given yours to me.
choose and help me to live in the righteousness that I now receive from you. God bless you as you pray this morning.
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It's a blessing to yes. know. Yes. It's a blessing to know Jesus. Yes, amen. Our sacrifice that he loved us so much that he yes. gave amen. his life for us. He yes. didn't have to do it. Yes. But while we were yet sinners, God commended his love toward us. Yes. He gave his life for yes, us. Yes, he did. Amen. What a good God we serve. And again, always keep this in mind. Yes. He doesn't require anything of us that he hasn't first given for us. Yes. It's easy serving a God who loves yes. you and does so much for you. Yes, indeed. God bless you this morning. It's been yes. a blessing to be in the house of God with each one who is here, with each one of you joining us online. So we're glad that you were able to join us for this opportunity. Of course, being online, being able to view it uh, on the Internet cannot take the place of meeting together in person. Yes. Okay. Uh, the Bible says, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together. And so much the more as you see the day approaching, that day that he's coming back is getting nearer Amen. every day you wake Amen. up. Amen. Yes. So as you have the opportunity, we hope that you'll come to join us in person. The online services are available if you just can't make it. I know I talked to somebody this week who said that she was going to be watching while she was at work because she's working Sunday morning. So whatever opportunity you have yes. to be with us, we're thankful for. Yes. But we hope that you'll take every opportunity also to join us in person. And of course, there are some watching from different parts of the country, but it's a blessing. It's a blessing that we're all one in the body of Christ. Amen. And with that thought in mind, Reverend Brooks, would you, sir, would you please pray to close the service this morning? Yes. Heavenly Father, we're so thankful for what you've done this service, Amen. Father, for each and every one here, for each heart and each life that you us, Father. We thank you for that sacrifice, Father, that you made for us yes. on the cross of Calvary. God, you didn't have to do it, but you did, and we're so thankful for it. Father, as we depart our separate ways, Father, let the words that was preached this morning find a place in our heart. Let us, let us apply them as we go forth, Father. Let others know about the salvation of Jesus Christ. We give you the praise, the honor, and the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you all this morning. Yes. God bless you this morning. And we will see you next time.